Welcome to the Cabrera Lab podcast. Hi. Hello. How you doing? I'm doing good. <laughs> Are you ready for another chat about stuff? A chat about stuff. A chat about yes. stuff. That's what we should call the podcast. A chat, chat about, about stuff. Chat about stuff. Because I never know what the stuff is. I know. That's the fun part. It's you all, always know what the stuff it's is. It's all under my control. The topic. Well, I, have an, I was thinking I have an interesting one for yeah. today. What is it? So we were walking the other day, you and me, and we were talking about this idea of getting underneath the surface of things. In, and I'm going to give you an example. So we were talking about how things happen and we get sort of distracted by the things that are happening and we think that the problem is the things that are happening, but the problem sometimes is the way we're thinking about the things that are happening. Yes. So let me give you an example. <clears throat> so as you know, and the world should know in a minute, my parents got divorced when I was five. Mm -hmm. And when I was just about to turn 13, I think, I went so my parents divorced. We had a visitation schedule. I saw my dad every other weekend. Yes, so mm -hmm. far so good. Yeah. So I know the story. you know the story. You know where I'm headed. And I was thinking about it in relation to what we were talking about. So one, just to fill everybody in, one weekend I went to go visit my dad. Well, actually, one weekend I was waiting for my dad to pick me up for our weekend visitation, and he yes. didn't show up. And I called and called, and I couldn't get him on the phone. And so. I was worried and my mother was worried that something was wrong, like he was in an accident or whatever. So we drive over to his house because we're concerned. It's my weekend to visit and we go up to the door and knock on the door and nobody answers. And then I look through that sort of long side window by the front door and it's a split house, you know, split level. Yeah. And my mother and I are looking and I realize all of his furniture is gone. That's... So he's moved, right? I'm thir almost 13 years old. And that was understandably a pivotal moment in my life yeah. because all of a sudden he was gone. I didn't know he was leaving. Um, and I had expected to visit for the weekend. And I think back based on what you were, you and I were talking yesterday about that moment that something happens to a person. Mm -hmm. And you can say, I could go through my whole life saying, this happened, and the problem is my dad left. <clears throat> and technically, the problem is my dad left. But the other problem is all of the mental models and all of the things I thought about it had a longer term effect on me, right? Because I was a child, obviously. And so I built a bunch of mental models, many of which were probably very untrue, like I wasn't lovable, I wasn't important enough for him not to move away without telling me, you know, like a series of things. And I was thinking about all of us have these experiences. And we think the experience is just the experience. The impact of us is the experience. But the impact of us is really the mental models we build in response to it or the way we think about the experience. Mm -hmm. And we carry that with us like rocks in our pockets for a long time, yeah. right? And so I think about then the trajectory of my life, which has been awesome, understandably, but also bumpy at times. And I think about the impact that that can have, those false mental models. That's hard. And I was thinking, that was not a plan. Sorry about that. <laughs> Tired. I was thinking about the power of being able to retroactively go back and sort of think differently and change those mental models that you've carried with you that cause problems. Yeah. Right? So, like, you worked with me a lot about, like, seeing it for what it was, like a child builds a mental model, like all children of divorce build the mental model, that it's their fault. Mm -hmm. And there's a moment where as an adult, you can go back and correct <clears throat> that mental model that's been sticky mm -hmm. and cause problems. And I think it's important for people to understand that. So I was thinking we could talk about what that looks like and why it's important to do that because of the, the weight of these things that we carry. 
it's something we do all the time. As, as you know, you know, um, your story is a great yeah. example of that. Um, and it can affect you for a lot of years yeah. and it can have profound effects on you. And, um, it's, you know, so I guess, I guess I would separate like mental models we build as children. Yeah. You have to kind of deal with them a little bit differently, Yeah, but not so differently. Uh, I think, you know, events occur and then we make meaning out of those events. The yeah. way we make meaning out of those events is that we build mental models. We organize the information in a particular way. Yes. Not necessarily the way it was organized right. in reality, right. but in a particular way. And that becomes the meaning that we take out of the event or the mental model. Meaning and mental model are yeah. the same thing. Yeah. And um, obviously our thinking is the, the organizing thing that that organizes the information and so as a kid like you said kids have bad things bad events quote unquote bad events happen yeah. to them yeah they usually blame themselves always <clears throat> yeah and i often think about well what would it be like you know if in an ideal world yeah Every kid that makes a faulty mental model at, at, the, as, at the scene of the event. Yes. <clears throat> for every kid that's doing that, there would be an adult present. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Who can help the child in that moment make a, a less faulty mental model. A mental right. model that's more realistic, that's more in love with reality, that's yeah. more in alignment with what's really happening. And hopefully less impactful. Yes, and and, that, yeah. and as a result of that, far less impactful for far less amount of time, right? Yeah. So if you think about that moment, in that moment, the ideal is to have that adult right there next to that kid. Yeah. But then you think about real life and you realize, well, that, that's not happening that's a lot. There's lots of kids that are experiencing lots of things and absent of adults, yeah. And when I say absence of adults, I don't mean adults of a particular age. I mean ad adults of a particular mentality. Yes. Like being in an adult mindset rather than, yes. you know, because I know plenty of 30 and 40 and 50 year olds that aren't quite adults yet. Right. So um, we want an adult with the kid. Yeah. And often there isn't an adult around. Yeah. So the first thing we have to do is, as a society, we have to create more adults, like actual adults, not just adults by age, yeah, but adults that are mature and, uh, you know, in service to others and things like that, you know. Right, right. The second thing that we have to do is figure out, well, what do we do when you're the kid and you had this event and there was no adult around? Right. Right? Because you had that event and you go, oh, my dad left. Yeah. It must be that there's something fundamentally wrong with me. Absolutely. Right? Yeah. Well, had you had an adult there, you, th that adult would say, no, it, it's just that your dad's an asshole. Right? I mean, th th that's what probably is a more accurate. Uh, I, well, or just, yeah, he has his own shortcomings. That One cause... of which is that he's an asshole. Well, yeah. Right? So sure. That would be how you would want to solve that situation. But what happens when that adult isn't there? So, it, that, and this gets into personal psychology. So, when you're, let's say that happens when you were how old? 13. 13. So, that something like that happens when you're 13 or, or any age, doesn't matter. Yeah. You build a mental model. You're, now, now, that event happened on a Tuesday. Well, mm -hmm. then the, the next Wednesday, the event is over. Yes. But you're still carrying the mental model. For sure. The next month, you're still carrying the mental model. The next year, you're still carrying the mental model. The next years. 35 <laughs> years, every day, you're holding on to that mental model. Yeah. Right? So what's staying with you is not the event. Mm -mm. It's the mental model that you created of the event, the meaning that you yes. took away from the event. Right? And yes. that, every day, is in the present moment affecting, in many cases, negatively yeah. your life, right? Yeah, for sure. So what do we do about that? Well, before you do that, yeah. I think what is important is, and something that I realized, is the connection between a mental model about something and your beha your subsequent behavior. Yes. Right. So you're saying, I had that mental model. And yep. that mental model, whether I knew it or not, was impacting everything. my self 
perception, <clears throat> my the kinds of relationships, like sure. how I viewed everything, sure. in, in and my insecurities, like you know when I had or when that I was one younger. in particular, because you're yeah. dealing with a, a really fundamental Trump relationship right. of of your of a parent and child, right? Yes. If it was just some rando guy on the street, I don't care. Yeah, you don't. That's not a fundamental relationship, right? Yeah. But this is a very fundamental relationship, and yeah. uh, and so yeah, that's going to affect a lot of actions, a lot of future actions, for sure. And I think the confusion is <clears throat> if you're down the road, you're having a pattern of events, a, pa a series of events, or things that are happening in your life, you forget to tra trace it back. Right to that original moment where you set that mental model in place that led to those behaviors. So you think it's the behavior that's the problem, but the problem is the mental model. Of yeah, I would say I would say it's even worse than that. Oh, really? Right? It, yeah, it's not about tr you forget to trace it back like I forget my keys. No, yeah. It, it's number one, you never even know that these things called mental models exist. Mm. You just assume that you experienced reality the that's first right. time the right way. Right. So you had the event, you had the, the thing occur, you experienced that event, you took meaning away from that event, and you assumed that that was the meaning to be taken away from that event. Yes. There was no like, oh, it's a mental model, it could be wrong. Right. Right? So we, we don't forget to go back. Yeah. We just assume that we created the right rendition of that event in fact we don't even have the concept of a rendition there is no rendition there's right. no there's no separation between yeah right. it just is that's like what that's what happened right what happened was my dad left me because i'm leavable yes right that's what happened yes we don't think wait a minute is that really what happened or is that my rendition of right. what happened my mental model of what happened is that right. my model of what happened or is it what actually happened is it my hypothesis right yeah so it's not a forgetting thing it's 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 a it's an assumptive thing we assume we assume yeah that we understand reality and we don't make any there's no daylight between reality and our perception of reality right so the reason we talk about loving reality is because loving reality just opens the window. door. Reality bias just opens a little bit of daylight Yeah. where you go, oh, you know, what I think and what is real might not be exactly the same thing. Might and as soon as it. you do that, then you can breathe. Yeah. Then you can be like, wait a minute, maybe I got this yeah. whole scenario wrong. Maybe I was wrong, maybe I was wrong about that. A long time. Yeah, a long time. Yeah. yeah. Interesting. So that's the first part. Yeah. Is just realizing that these things called mental models exist or thinking models exist. Yes. And um, and then once we realize that, in the in in these kinds of cases where something happens in childhood, there was no perceptive adult around that that said, "Hey, wait a minute, no, you shouldn't be thinking that." Well, can I just interject yeah. there? Sorry. No, no. I was just thinking when you said that, it's not necessarily that an adult isn't there. The adult has fallen prey to also just reacting to the event. Yeah, that's why I said perceptive adult. Oh, yes. Yeah, so there, there's a, there's tons of yeah. age-based adults around. Yeah. Sometimes there's no adults around, yeah. and that's a really that's sad. sad situation. Yeah. But there's tons of adults around because right. we define adults at 18 years old. Right. But I'm talking about there's no one around that goes... Okay, like what what does a per what does a little girl do yeah. when they are faced with this situation? What do they do in their mind? What do they do in their thinking? Yeah. What are they going to assume? Right. And what things can I do to bring that out of them and then correct it? Right. And if there's nobody like that, if there's adults that are just worried about their, you know, their their career and all the things that are going on and they're just oh, swept up in their own life and that they're also you know, mostly unaware of their own thinking anyway, That's then, the then, yeah. then for all intents and purposes, you're shit out of luck on adults. There yeah. are no adults. That's a technical term. Shit out of luck. <laughs> yeah. It's like you're, you, for all intents and purposes, there was no adult around. There should have been an adult around, but yeah. there wasn't. I know I'm playing with the word adult a little bit here. Yeah. But, but I guess that we should call a spade a spade. And if, if, if an adult allows that to, 
to occur and doesn't do anything about it, then what's the point of the adulthood? I get that. And I think, I guess the way I look at it is adults are just grown up children and adults have the same fault. <clears throat> they, they also don't see reality because they don't know about mental models and they don't know to check mental models. Yeah. And I guess I would push back on that a little bit because, yeah, because it was the same, like our last podcast, we talked about education and things like that. And like adults are just grown up children because of our education system. Right. Because of our lack of parenting. They're not supposed to be grown up children. They're supposed to be adults. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Right. But they become grown up children because all we do is we sort of say, well, if you're 18 and you're paying your bills and you got a job and all this stuff, then you're an adult. Right. Right. But <clears throat> there's way more to adulthood than, that. than just turning 18 and getting a job and paying your bills. Like you're supposed to actually develop over time and become a better human being and and like learn stuff and like you know maybe be introspective and uh, understand right. what you do has effects and what you don't do has effects in the world right so to me you know adulthood is the high bar that we should be striving for mm -hmm. not a low bar that we kind of just go, oh, yeah, everybody gets a, you know, everybody gets the adulthood trophy. Right. So, so let's say somebody has an event yeah. and that event causes um, whatever series of mental models to be built that are yeah. inaccurate and have an effect on them. Yeah. Then how do they, how, what's the process for correcting that? If they're, if they know about these things or it, like if they're a kid. Let's say if, if they're, let's say not just a kid, but a person, a person who, you know, well, first they need to realize that part of the problem is just thinking, focusing on how they're thinking in the mental models they've built. Yeah. That's I mean, that, that if, if you're an adult and you have an event and, and it's happening right now and, it, you know, then, then it's about loving reality, right? That's right. why loving reality is so important. And it's about, you know, DSRPing your thinking so that you can uh, better better align with what's really happening. You know, we tend to we tend to put like good and bad and just these very simple things on events like oh this is good, this is bad, this is good, right. this is bad. You know, but why not just hey this is this is what happened. Right. These are some of the reasons why it happened. The web of causality that led to X, Y, Z happening. And, you know, yeah. this is this is how I'm responding to it. These are my emotions. These are my right. thoughts. Those are not the same thing. You know, so so being metacognitive or being, you know, aware or up thinking or being trained in, in understanding how you think is going to help you deal with that situation in a in a more appropriate way. So when you're a kid and you create kind of this false mental model or it's not aligned with the reality of the situation and there's nobody there at the moment to sort of coach you to build the right mental model, what can you do to fix that? Like, I guess, either at that moment or later in life, like how do you course correct? Well, at that moment, you're kind of hosed. But, yeah. you know, if there's no adults around to help you, that's the whole point of adults is they're supposed to help children. Um, you know, that's the that's kind of the evolutionary point of adults yeah. after after repropriation and all that. So, um, you know, so so on the one side, we have to build better societies, better education systems, better parenting so that we so that we don't end up in so many situations where there are so many kids having so many events without so many adults around. Right. right. I mean, that's kind that of the, that's kind of yeah. a big problem. But um, on the other side, then then I guess there's things that w we can do if those kids don't get trained early. I mean, we don't, we're not training kids early to think. We training them what to think, but not how to think. And right. so as a result of that, they don't have the skills to deal with those events, right? No, not at the moment. So then that kid is inevitably going to end up being um, one of these adults that reaches quote unquote age adulthood, yeah. but uh, doesn't have the skills to deal with their mental situation. Yeah. And then they're going to act out all those things in their actions, right? Because their mental models will just be right. d derive um, action, right. right? 
Right. Uh, it's not like is it's not like will action occur as a result of mental models. They will action will occur as a result of mental models. If you believe something to be true, then you right. will act as if it's true. And you might not necessarily know that those actions are connected to that. Yeah, you might not even model. know that you believe it's true, right? You like it might be a, it you just act it out, right? right? And so you have a string of bad relationships, or you have a string of you know whatever, and you're like. Why does this always happen to me? Or what, why does right. this keep happening to me? That's that's reality giving you feedback because reality is super patient. It's always giving you yes. feedback. And if you don't learn the lesson, it'll just keep giving you the same feedback. Yep. But there is something that you can do at some point if, if you learn this, if you learn to be, you know, to do up thinking, to, to be metacognitive, to be more aware of what's going on in your mental model yeah. creation, your thinking processes, mm -hmm. then what, what you can do is understand what we were talking about a little bit earlier, which is the thing that you're carrying with you is a mental model. Right. Right? Right. Which means that at any given moment... Now we're talking, this, this gets a little complex because you have to understand time, right? So yeah. the event happened in the past. Yes. The event is not affecting the present because the event is in the past. It already happened. It already happened. Yes. So what's affecting the present has to be something in the present. Right. And that something in the present is your mental model. Yep. So you have a mental model that exists in the present moment. Yes. And that mental model that's existing in the present moment is affecting your behavior, your actions, your life. Yes. Who believes that mental model? Hmm. Well, this little kid believes the mental model, but the little kid is, in, is also in the past. Where's that little kid? That kid is in your brain. Yeah. That little kid is in your mind. So there's a kid-like mental model that's existing in your mind right now. Yes. And that mental model is wreaking havoc on your life. Yeah, and right? you might not know it. And you might not even know what the mental model is, and you might you not be in touch. You just know you're having issues feelings. over and over you're again. You're having feelings. feelings. Yeah, usually yeah. you're just having feelings. <laughs> and and then you're reacting to the feelings. Yes. So what we want to do is kind of tone down, like uh, deconstruct the feelings and, and differentiate them from the thinking. Right. And we, not, we want to try to pause mm -hmm. so that the reaction time is elongated a little bit. So there's a little less reaction yes. and a little more action, right? Yes. And then what we can do is actually find that that little part of you that's that kid-like part of you that believes this kid-like mental model, which is yep. it's my fault that this guy, this grown man left. Yeah. Right? Yep. There's something wrong with me that this grown man left. Yeah. Right? And, and then you as the adult can coach your, this sounds kind of goofy, but you can coach that inner mental model, that inner child-like mental model. And you can see, oh, wait a minute. You can do what you would do Yes. had yeah. you been there. So yeah. imagine, imagine for a moment that you were walking down the street and you saw a little girl run up to a house and then look in the window excitedly yeah. and then, or nervously and then stop, freeze, yeah. And then run away from the house bawling. Yes. And you were there on the street. Yeah. And you would say, what would you say as, a, as an adult? You would say, sweetie, are yeah. you okay? Is, is everything okay? What's happened? Did something happen? Yeah. And then maybe she would say, well, I came to see my dad and, and he's gone. Like gone. Like gone, gone. Like yeah. his furniture's gone. Everything's gone. Yeah. And... It, and and you, you, what would you say as an adult? What would you say to that little child? Like, right. in a, not your inner child, a real actual child. Yeah. What would you say? You would say... That's terrible. That's terrible, sweetie. Yeah. You know, like, blah, 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 right? Mm -hmm. You'd say the things that an, that an adult would say. Yeah. And when she told you that it's her fault, you would yeah. say, no, it is not your fault. Yeah. It's definitely There's not your fault. No way. There is no way that it's your fault. Yeah. That's what you would say to her. Yes. You would try to correct her mental model. Yes. Well, you can do that with your own childlike mental models. You can be the adult in yes. the child that is existing in your brain. Yes. Right? So you're playing kind of a dual role of ch child and adult. And you're coaching your childlike 
mental models yes. to evolve because something broke and it and it never got repaired i i i always use the term um the metaphor of like fiber optic cables it's yeah. like your life adulthood is like a fiber optic cable if you've ever seen a fiber optic cable it has yeah. like thousands of little strands yep and they're made out of glass right mm -hmm. and uh it's easy when you're installing it to break some of those little strands, right? Well, life is kind of like that, like the little strands get broken. And you can imagine your whole life is the whole cable, but it has all these strands in it. And if, if enough of these little strands get broken, they just stay broken. They don't regrow. They don't regrow, right? Yeah. And so the, the goal is to get all your strands to be the same length. That would be like what an adult would be. So if all your I strands see. are 30 years old, then you're 30 years old, right? Meaning you haven't gotten stunted or stopped. You haven't stopped gotten stunted at different points at any and place, thousands yeah, of these little the strands. And a bunch of them are broken. And if you can just kind of repair each one, yeah. then then you can grow and end up being like the length of a 30-year-old or the length of a 50-year-old. Yes. Or like not just the age length, but the, the maturity length. Right. So are you saying that sort of conversation with your younger self can kind of heal. It can kind of heal that strand and, and yeah. elongate it to become 30 years old. Because basically you're you're a 30-year-old or a 50-year-old yeah. or whatever year old that's working on a 12-year-old or a 13-year-old mental model. About that A 13-year-old's yes, mental, mental model, model. Yeah. right? Yeah. And so you're you're operating in, in 30-year-old life, mm -hmm. right? With the mental with model a mental of a model of a child, mm -hmm. and so yeah, are you know you're going to make mistakes in relationships, and you're going to make mm -hmm. mistakes in all kinds of things. Well, because... it's going to impact your overall sense of yourself. Absolutely. So you can actually go back and reconcile the mental model itself, which then will reduce its overall impact over time in the present so you can yeah except i would just i would change one thing yeah. there you're not going back right because all of it's in the present right that's important because you're yeah. we're not analyzing your past we're not doing freudian you know mm -mm. couch psychology no. we're just saying in the present you have a mental model that exists. It's affecting your behavior in the present. It's affecting your action in the present. It's affecting what you feel in the present about some present moment experience. Right. Everything's in the present. So all we're doing is looking for this mental model that's existing in the present, manifesting in the present. And we're saying, wait a minute. Is that true? Is that mental model true? Because I've been believing it Forever. for a long time. Yeah. And it's it's affecting me in in negative in consistently negative ways. Yes. So let's fix it in the present. So there's no need to like. I, I'm not advocating that necessarily. We have to dig up the past. We just got to be like, what would you say to that kid? Right. In the present. Well, yep. say it to your kid in the present. Right. Then it changes. Yeah. It changes everything. Changes everything. Because then you don't carry that mm. weight with you. Then you've kind of. Result. Yeah, and what I would say is like, you know, you as you go up in the world, as you get older and, you know, you meet I a lot of great older. people. <laughs> yeah. But you also meet some assholes. True. And the the problem with being a kid is you never believe that your parents are assholes. You always think your parents are wonderful. I know. Right? Yeah. But just mathematically speaking, with the number of assholes in the world, some of them have to be parents. True. Which means some kids have assholes for parents. True. And That's hard for a kid to mm -hmm. realize. Like, but mathematically, it has to be true that if there's this many assholes, some of them the have to be are... somebody's parents. <laughs> yeah, but in a weird way, putting it in those mathematical terms lets it not feel personal. Yeah. It's just statistically it's just the reality. It's improbable yeah. that everybody's parents are wonderful. You know, yeah. your dad. Not so great. Was an asshole. Yeah. Let's just My call mom, spade. fantastic. Your mom was fantastic, but your dad was an asshole. Yeah. And, and, and you know, that's just all there is to it. It's it like has literally job. nothing to do with you. I know. It's just so funny how children just always. That's what they do. Turn they, it inward. They turn it Because I guess inward. that's just what kids yeah. do. Yeah. Well, because of what I'm saying, like, 
you're born into this world and for for many kids there's two faces yeah right or one face or whatever you know that face is the face of comfort security everything yes. right yes and you're programmed to be in love with that face yeah you're actually imprinted. and that face yeah. is most of the time programmed to be in love with you and the last thing in the world that you want to come to the realization of is that that face one of them is one of them or both of them sometimes is the face of an asshole true true right so that's not going to come easily no. but but sometimes you have to just sort of get there you have to say ah yeah your dad's yeah he's an asshole well what's interesting is yeah I don't know if that's funny. <laughs> it's liberating. It's not funny. It's just true. Yeah. It's reality. Like, yeah. I mean, you know, who, who yeah. does that? An asshole, for sure. Definitely, it wasn't you. No, no. It's good to know that. Yeah. You know, at whatever point in life you can realize it, it's good <laughs> to know it. It liberates you from all of the, the weight of it, you yeah. know, when you're moving through your life. Changes how you really your relationships with yourself and with others, which is good. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so I don't know, and not I don't want this to be some heavy, sad podcast episode. So I was thinking. We st sorry. We started it off. That's my fault. <laughs> Ooh, my dad left. <laughs> well, so let's give a more modern example. Okay. A more recent example. <laughs> the people are going to think I'm mess up with this episode. Yeah. So I was thinking about this. Um, it's kind of remarkable how functional you are. Well, given given your your past, I mean, like I am all <laughs> whack and doodle, but but I had like a great family. Yeah. I had like total stability and wonderful family. I had my issues with the the system school and system, the school yeah. system and stuff, but my family was like my rock. Yeah, you know. Yeah, you're lucky. But you had like. Some, Some tough stuff. I did have tough stuff. It's amazing that you are even at all, like, that you can walk. <laughs> yeah. Let alone do yoga. Yeah, exactly. And have children. It's crazy. <laughs> uh, well, thank you for saying that. That's very sweet. Um, well, I was thinking about, well, but a lot of the credit goes to actually being the, a person who wants to get better. Mm -hmm. who wants to be better, who wants to strive to overcome the things that I think are in my way. Yeah. I wouldn't have realized that connection from like old, me older mental models to present behavior until I sort of started to understand the whole idea of metacognition and being aware of how you're thinking and making that connection that wouldn't, I wouldn't have gotten through a lot of the stuff that I had gotten through without the power of that. It's a really powerful reflective tool, right? Yeah. And the fact that it's not just reflection, but a reflection that leads to action that can actually change yeah. everything. It changes how you think about things. It changes how you think about yourself. It changes all the choices you make. And it also is a, is a is a sort of daily reminder to be checking that you're sort of interacting that you're seeing reality mm -hmm. because if you're seeing reality then you can navigate it better yeah right and you can have different types of actions and things yeah i think i think that's uh, that's a hugely important idea that um that you have to want to get better yes i think um you know we used to think, oh, well, you know, eight billion. There's eight billion people in the world, and and all of them need thinking. Yeah. And all of them need, you know, up thinking or metacognition or awareness of yeah. how they think. But over the years, I think we've adjusted our our understanding of that, which is that really, it's just the ones that want to get better, because there yeah. are people that maybe don't think that that yeah. way that they're they're, yeah. they're not trying to get better uh they're and so kind of comfortable where they're at. they're kind of comfortable yeah. yeah so i think if you want to get better if you want to improve then thinking is something you have to focus on for sure because thinking differently 
if, if you, you know, improvement by definition is change. So there has to be some change in the mental model for learning to occur. Yes. Um, so, so you, it is really about having that fundamental thing of wanting to get better at something, at anything. Yeah. And I think also part of it is not, mm, not believing that you're on a set path that you can't change. Yeah. Like that to me is, I meet a lot of people. Do you think a lot of people think that? I meet, I've met quite a few people in work and in life that I think they have the idea that it's sort of cat, like it's cast, like they're going to have this job and they're going to do this and they're going to feel this way about that. And they're just kind of going through it and they don't necessarily have, have a, a sense of agency to do something totally different if they wanted to. You know, like how many times have I met people who went to law school and then 10 years later became a chef or yeah. became a something yeah. else? Because it's like their whole life they thought they were supposed to be a lawyer. Yes. And then they get there and the reality is yeah, a lot of those in the, they don't want to. Yeah, really. right? um, yeah that's, that's admittedly hard for me to grasp. Well, we've talked about this. You're not the norm. Like yeah, you have just, a different. I've just never you have that thought metric. that anything was sort of cast. That's just not. You have a gene that I think we could <laughs> name Maverick, <laughs> so or I don't know the what the entrepreneurial other gene or something like that. Yeah, yeah, just yeah. I, I don't. It's definitely not cast. I mean, that's yeah. the reality. That that if you want to love reality, your life is not cast. Like anything yep. could happen. Yeah. Anything. Literally Almost, anything. Yeah. And it could be amazing. Crazy things. Yeah. Or it could be really terrible. You can't. <laughs> I, mean, I guess the way to put it. reality. <laughs> yeah, but I think the way to put it is you have more more agency than yes, you think. For in, sure. In changing for sure. or, or setting your own path. Yes. And one of the ways to do that is to start with the path of reality. Yes. And, and to be cognizant of that and reflective of that as you're as you're going yeah right absolutely got to end on a high note not a low note are we ending oh i don't know oh. i was just saying we can't leave it on terrible i wasn't saying it was gonna be terrible i was just saying it like could it, be it terrible. could it's, t- it's yeah, so hypothetically like, possible that your life could work out terrible. i could have gone through my whole <laughs> life i could have gone through my whole life believing i'm unlovable yeah and totally leavable and that would have been terrible that would have been terrible but i Thankfully, course corrected yeah. a while ago, and yeah. now I understand that I'm incredibly lovable yep. and not leaveable. Yep. You know? And that makes all the difference in For everything. Sure. Well, now it's time. What's time? It's time to say, that's a wrap. It is? Yeah. How do you know that? I intuit it. <laughs> you just decide. I'm just all powerful. I know that you have agency. I have agency to decide. To, <laughs> That's a when wrap. to call it a wrap. My mental model right. is that it's time to wrap. It is time to wrap. So that's a wrap. That is a wrap. We are out. Mm-hmm.